Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can implement bidirectional streaming or BiDi in gRPC in .NET. Up until now, we've only touched upon unary calls and streaming from client to server or from server to client. And those are called half duplex mechanisms because it, only one of the two parties is constantly pumping messages to the other. In this scenario, we're going to see what is called a full duplex, where both parties, without expecting a request from the server or the client, can send messages effectively. And we're going to see how we can implement that we're using a chat service as an example. Now, full disclaimer, I don't really recommend using it to actually build a chat service. I think that web sockets and the ways we've been doing it for years now, um, like maybe even uh, Signal R, are actually more robust for that specific use case, but it does help me to illustrate the point very easily because chat is something that all of us know. So I'm gonna use that. So let's just dive straight into the code. First, I'm gonna go into the Protoss folder and up until now we've been dealing with this uh, weather project. But what I wanna do instead is I wanna create a new package, a new proto file, and I'm going to call it the chat.proto. So let's go ahead and make that file right now and say uh, chat.proto and I'm gonna paste those things because I'm an engineer, that's all I'm doing. And now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and create the uh, service and the service will be a chat service. So here we go and we're gonna create a single RPC call and that RPC call will be called send message. And let me just give it a structure. While uh, before we only had either streaming here or here or in neither of those places, now we're gonna have stream in both. So stream and stream both on the request and the response. And I will need two messages. The first one will be a client to server message. And the other one will be uh, server to client. They could very much be the same exact uh, message or contract. Uh, but I will split them because I want to add timestamp in one of the two. You, you don't really have to, but you can if you want to. So let's create them. I'm going to make a new message uh, called client to server message because that's the request effectively, but it's not really a request at this point. It's just what the client is expected to send and similar to the response. It's not really a response. It's just what we expect the server to send back. And I'm just going to have one field called text or message uh, equals one because it's the first and then we have the same for the uh, response however we are going to have an extra property here and that's going to be the google.protobuff.timestamp uh, and I'm going to populate that here and that's what our profile, what our contract will look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the solution because that will enable protobuf to kick in and rebuild or actually build my uh, c sharp classes based on that protobuf file and i won't really touch this weather service i can close that and i can make a new one called chat service and this chat service oh this i'm pretty sure it didn't actually implement the it didn't create the code because i never added in the csproj file the protobuf file reference so the compiler or the code generation wouldn't kick in and find it so we're going to say protobuf include chat.proto and it's a server uh, side service so that should be enough now i will rebuild the project and now my code should successfully be generated so i'm going to say uh, extend the chat base class here we go and i'm going to use a constructor and inject a logger because i want to write the messages that the server is receiving in the logger so we can see that we're getting them uh, private read only i logger chat service underscore logger here we go and now i'm gonna override the only method that this base class should have which is the send message and as you can see similar to how we had before now we have effectively both worlds in the same uh method let me just uh not return anything here i'm going to turn this into an async and as you can see before we either had an i uh, async stream reader or an i server stream writer 
and either returning null or returning an object. In this scenario, we're not returning anything because in this call, again, a by a bidirectional uh, streaming method, both the client and the server can fire messages to each other without one needing to request something. And that's the whole idea of building a chat on top of it. So the way I want to do this is first, I'm going to have to create a couple of tasks and those tasks will be running in parallel um, dealing with incoming or outgoing requests. So first, let's implement the uh, client message handling. So the client sending something to the server. And for that, we're going to use the request stream, which is supposed to represent that. And we're going to say that. And let's see what methods we have here to use. We have a current property, which is the current message that the client is sending to us. And since those are coming in an order from the client, we can iterate over them either with read all async or move next and current. I'm going to use that and I'm going to show you why. So what I can do is I can say while request stream dot move next and I'm going to await that. So basically while you have more messages to move to internally in the iterator, then uh, message, which is the client to server message, equals request stream dot current and all we want to do with this message is say logger dot log information and then the client said something and that something is the message so message goes here if I could type it properly comma uh, message dot text and here we go with that we should be able to keep listening for messages from the client and returning them however if i was to do that i would effectively block not the thread but the method iteration because it would keep waiting for more and more uh, to move to next um, something else i can do here actually is i can add something to this uh, while iterator logic so i say while you have next and if I could find the button, context.cancellation token dot is cancellation requested. So while it is not cancellation requested uh, and you have something to do, then print the message to the console. So that's one of them. The other one is the server sending to the client. And because I this will be a completely hands off approach, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the server to send to the client every one second a message basically so let's do that i'm gonna say while cancellation has not been requested and then i'm gonna have a ping count equals uh, to zero and i'm gonna say response stream this is the stream where the server is writing for the client to read dot write async and we're gonna write our new server to client message and that message let me just await that here and that message will say uh, text equals server said hi and then a number times so how many times did the server say hi we're gonna say plus plus uh, ping count so server said hi however many times it did say hi basically and then we're going to add the timestamp as well so timestamp is uh, from date time and we're going to say daytime utc now and that's it so now we have those two things the problem is uh and let me actually add an await here task dot delay for one second so every second this loop will be triggered and the server will send to the client a message now if i was to just run this the code wouldn't go past this loop because these two wouldn't allow it to so here's what we can do we can extract this into a task and we're going to say client to server ping handling async or ah, let's just do that here you go so server to client ping handling goes here and it returns a task an async task and then you have this which is client uh, server to client ping async and this is the part where the server is pinging back to the client a message every second if i was to keep the await here i would still 
wouldn't be able to go past this line because the iterator will hold it there. What I can do, however, is I can remove the await and say uh, client to server task and then server to client task. And by removing the awaiting here, I can await both of them underneath by saying task dot when all. And I can say client to server, comma, uh, server to client. And now by doing that, those two things will run uh, separately and they will do their bit, which is send a message from the client to the server every second or accept a message from the client when the client sends it. Now, the last thing I need to do for all this to work is I'm gonna go to the startup and I'm gonna add uh, to the endpoints the gRPC service. So map gRPC service, uh, chat service goes here, and that's it. I'm ready to run it. Now, like I've said in the previous videos, in case we ha you haven't watched those, I am not implementing a client in C-Shop yet. This is the next video where we're gonna implement one for unary calls, client streaming, server streaming, and by die streaming. Until now, I've been using something called Bloom RPC, which is an RPC client, a gRPC client with an interface, which allows me to demonstrate those things very, very easily. So I'm going to use that for this use case as well. I'm going to run this service now. And I'm going to uh, go to Bloom RPC. Sorry for it being uh, quite small. It doesn't support a, a font increase, uh, but I will zoom in in video editing for you to see this better. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add protos and I'm gonna add the chat.proto which is the one we just added and by clicking on it the uh, server detects or actually the Bloom RPC code detects that it's a bi-directional streaming call and I'm gonna just put some text here I'm gonna say uh, hi I'm Nick Flom, Flom from <laughs> Bloom RPC and I'm gonna press the button and this will send the first message and open a connection, but this connection will stay open. And as this connection opens, the server will start pinging us back with those messages that we saw. So let's just press the big green button. As you can see, there's this stream one, stream two, stream three. Those are all the responses from the server to the client once per second. If I was to stop this and disable interactive and press start you see that every second now this is updating because the server is responding back every second with a new message we don't send anything it's still the exact same connection that we opened before we don't establish a new one every time but using that connection the server is sending a message to the client and it doesn't expect it to respond if i stop this and re-enable interactive because I want to show you multiple messages from the client. Uh, you can see in the console that uh, the client said, Hi, I'm Nick Bloom RPC. And that only happened once, but and, and still the server is responding with you messages every second. But now I can say whatever I want. Hey, respond. Not response, respond. And I can push data and I can push it many times. And as you can see in the console, this will keep sending data, I can put whatever I want. So you have messages coming from the client through the exact same connection, nothing is established again, and then you have the server responding to the client. Uh, and it was really, really easy to do. Again, I don't recommend you building a chat service using gRPC. There are many other concerns that you have to deal with, like in-application retries, potential for deadlocks. Uh, th there are some caveats, especially for advanced usage. But if you have something that can be fairly shorter lived, but you can benefit from bi-directional streaming, um, then it should be way, way easier to implement um, in your application, in your ASP.NET Core application. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.